Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Valley Baptist Church. So glad you could join us for our Sunday school service. If you please turn to 250, 250 burdens are lifted at Calvary. and all the wonderful blessings that you've given us this week, Lord. Lord, uh, giving us the opportunity to come to you here, Lord, and uh, to study your word and to further grow with you, Lord. Lord, I do pray that you please be with us this Sunday school hour, Lord, that you just give us uh, an abundance of knowledge and wisdom, Lord, that you just bless pastor with utterance and boldness to teach. Lord, uh, have us open up our hearts and be receptive to your word, Lord. Lord, just uh, we're able to take this uh, your word out into the world, Lord, so that uh, we're better prepared, Lord, we're more bold to serve you, Lord, and to give those the gospel who need it. Lord, I ask that uh, you please be with those who are traveling um, this morning, Lord, that you just bless them, Lord. Lord, and I pray, I pray for those who are watching virtually, Lord, that this, uh, this study just be an opportunity of encouragement to them, Lord, so that they may have the desire to come and seek you. Lord, I just pray in your glorious name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday school class this morning. We are studying the nation of Israel currently. And uh, we're going through the covenants. And we just finished the Abrahamic covenants. And uh, we saw the promises of the Abrahamic covenants. We saw the prophecies of the Abrahamic covenants. And we also looked at the permanency of the Abrahamic covenants. And uh, we're now going to move to the Palestinian covenants. So with that, open up your Bibles to the book of Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Verses 1 and 2. Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 and 2. The Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 and 2, And it shall come to pass, and thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. And then also verse number 15 says, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. This covenant, the Palestinian covenant, enlarges on the provisions of the Abrahamic covenant, 
concerning the land. The full text of the covenant is found in Deuteronomy chapters 28 through 30. It was given to the nation of Israel just before it was about to enter the promised land, which at the time was inhabited by others. This covenant deals with the conditions upon which Israel would enjoy the blessings of the promise of the Abrahamic covenants. And remember that a covenant is a contract between two parties. And in the Old Testament, uh, the way a covenant was uh, done was that they would take animals, cut them in half, put them in front of each other, and then both parties would walk through the carcasses of the animals, and that signified, let this happen to me if I do not do according to the covenant. Okay? And then both parties would, would walk through, and that, would, that was like the handshake. All right, and then also remember that the covenants came in two types. The covenants came in two types, this type and this type. What were they? Unconditional and unconditional. Very good, conditional and unconditional. Conditional means this, it's like this. Okay, if you do this, then I'll do this. But which is ready right now? What kind of covenant is this? <coughs> which is ready? What kind of covenant is it? Uh, conditional. conditional. If you do this, then all these blessings will come, right? But if you don't do this, then all these curses will come upon you. So this is, <coughs> this is a conditional covenant. And then, of course, the other covenant type is the unconditional covenants. We have an example of that between God and Abraham. And that when God made this covenant with Abraham, uh, the only one that walked through the carcasses was God. And by that, he was saying, I'm going to do this regardless. Whether you do this or not, I am going to do this. Okay? And then God keeps that promise through the, all the other generations to follow. Okay? Because it's a, it's a, it's a promise and a, a covenant that he made with, with their fathers. And he always reminds them of that. Okay? So, this, um, the covenant details deals with the conditions upon which Israel would enjoy the blessings of the promise of the Abrahamic covenant. Okay, so the provisions. Number one, let's look at the provisions of the Palestinian covenant. Deuteronomy 11.26. Deuteronomy 11.26. Deuteronomy 11.26. <clears throat> Twenty-six through twenty-eight. The Bible says in Deuteronomy eleven twenty-six: "Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. A blessing if ye obey the commandment of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and a curse if ye will not obey the commandment of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other small g gods, which you have not known." Okay, so. According to this uh, Palestinian covenant, the provisions were that God was going to send before his people a what? A what and a what? A blessing and a curse. Okay? A blessing and a curse. And then also, uh, both of these conditions upon whether Israel would both of these conditions were upon whether Israel would what? Go after other gods. Would no. hearken. Would hearken. Okay? Uh, that goes back to uh, it's not in front of you. It's the, the text that we read before. Uh, Deuteronomy 28. Keep your finger here. Look at 28. Chapter 28 verse 1. And then it'll, it'll come through right there. Okay? Look at this. And it shall come to pass that if thou shalt what? Hearken. hearken. What does hearken mean? To listen. to listen. And if you look at the, the, the spelling of the word, look at the look at the look at the two parts of it. The first part is ear, right? Mm -hmm. To hear. So both of these conditions were based upon the fact of whether Israel would hearken, would listen diligently to what? 
for the voice of the Lord to observe, observe to do all these commandments. Very good. Okay? So the blessings were based upon them listening to God, the voice of God, to observe and to do all his commandments. Okay? If they did that, then the blessings would come upon them. Okay? Also, the covenant anticipated, this is this was very interesting to me. Well, of course, I mean it makes sense. The covenant anticipated. Israel's disobedience. God sees the past, the present, and the future all at the same time. God already knew what they were going to do. So the lesson says that God anticipated the disobedience of Israel, which eventually resulted in, look at Deuteronomy 28, 64. Deuteronomy 28, 64, this is the result of their disobedience. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 20, 64, And the Lord shall scatter thee among the whole people, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other, and there thou shalt serve other gods which thee did not. Nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone. Okay, so the covenant anticipated the disobedience, which eventually resulted in man being, what's the feeling right there? From verse 64, And the Lord showed what? Scattered. Scattered, E-D, among all people. Okay? And we, we, we know this. You know, it always amazes me that they're in Israel, they're finding, uh, they're finding and they're digging and stuff, because they, they're always digging for things. And they're finding uh, pots, utensils, uh, uh, stone uh, tablets. They're finding tablets, okay? They have the word of God and, and, and uh, you know, like from the book of Isaiah and all these things like that. And it just confirms that that everything is true, the Bible says. Everything is true. And they were scattered because of the disobedience, because they were an idolatrous nation. And then God sent them to one end of the earth, to, uh, from one end of the earth to the other. And Right now, Israel became a nation in 1948, and since then, they were coming to Israel from all over the world. The Jews are coming back to the land, okay? Uh, a large percentage of them, I would say something like 60% of all the Jews that have returned to Israel, take a guess where they came from. About over 60% of them came from where? <clears throat> take a guess, one guess. No. Russia. The Russian. Okay? They're, they're everywhere. Like right now, you know, the war's going on between uh, Ukraine and Russia. Well, guess what? Ukraine is, is full of, uh, of Jews too. Okay? They haven't returned yet, but they're trying to get back to their promised land. So they're, they're, the, the word is true. God said, You disobey me, I'll scatter you, and that's what they are. So they're returning now, okay? Uh, in Deuteronomy 20, 28, 65, the Bible says, And among these nations shall thou find no ease. Okay? You will find no ease among the nations. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart, and failing of eyes, and sorrow of mind. So, because of this disobedience, God scattered them all over the world. Whatever nation they ended up in, can you say from that verse what kind of life they have lived? A very rough life. Okay? Uh, the first thing that came to my mind was uh, the, the prison camps in, in Germany. Okay? Where they used them like, like animals, doing uh, experiments on them. Okay? And killing over six or six million Jews they killed there okay so they have not had ease no rest they've had a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind so you could tell that it, those lives that lived there they were insecure 
there are always, because you know, people want to find out, what are you? What are you? You know, I wonder how many times they have to lie to, to, to say I'm not a Jew. Uh, stati statistically right now, um, as far as racial profiling, they are the highest ethnic group out of all in the entire world that are racially profiled and treated um, less than yeah. in every country. Yeah, so it's still going on, huh? It's still going on. And so, uh, finding no ease, and then uh, 37, 28, 37 says that they would also become, in 28, 37, the Bible says, and that should become astonishment and astonishment and a proverb and a byword among all nations whether the Lord shall lead thee. Okay? What 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 do you think it's saying right there? They're becoming an astonishment that you're feeling right there? A proverb and a byword. Okay? It's not good. It's not good. It's not good. Can you think of names they call them? Okay? Dogs, the world calls them dogs. By the way, how, what did they used to call the, the, the Gentiles? Dogs. They called them dogs. Now it's happening to them, huh? By other people. And uh, a byword, a proverb, uh, nicknames, like really bad nicknames. Um, and so that's what happened to them. In a proverb, and people ask, why are they like that? What happened to them? You know, and that's the scriptures fulfilled. I mean, they would live that kind of life. People would call them names and treat them less than human, right? Mm -hmm. That's the consequences of disobedience. By the way, a person that knows Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, if that person decides to go back to the world because it happens, okay? They, they, uh, the world will treat them the same way. Even though they're saved, the world, when the world knows that, that, that you're saved, they don't treat you. They don't say, oh, look, he's saved. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the world. They don't do that to you. No, you stand out like a sore thumb. They don't treat you right. They don't want you to be part of their groups. They don't want you to, uh, to participate in their activities because you're one of them. See, and it's not a, it's not a, a easy kind of life. People think that oh, I just go back to the world. I just land then. But look, look at Jonah. Remember Jonah, when God told him to go to Nineveh, and then he ran away to hide from him, right? Was he able to hide? He was never to hide. People found him out, didn't they? They found him out, and that's what happens to people who go back to the world. The prophecies of the Palestinian covenant. This is in chapter 30, verses 1 through 9. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, that the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whether the Lord thy God hath driven thee. So they're going to be reminded, okay, always of what they did. And shall return and shall return unto the Lord thy God, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. If any of any of thine thine be driven out unto the utmost parts of heaven, from then will, I, will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from then will he fetch thee. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers have possessed, and thou shalt possess it. And he will do thee good, and multiply thee above thy fathers. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart, and the heart of thy seed, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and that thou mayest live. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecute thee. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments which I command thee this day. And 
The Lord thy God will make thee a plenteous in every work of thine hand, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, and the fruit of thy land, for good, for the Lord will again rejoice over thee, for good, as he rejoiced over thy fathers. So the prophecies of the Palestinian covenant, uh, letter A, 2A says, Israel will be what? Verse number one, uh, chapter, I mean, uh, page 155, 2A. It says, Israel will be. The feeling is driven D. 2A. Israel will be. Are you guys in, in chapter 30, right? Yes. Okay, 30 verse 1, Israel will be driven among all nations. The last part of the verse. <clears throat> when the Lord, the Lord thy God has driven thee, and it should come to pass when all these things, okay? And verse 2, and shall return unto the Lord, okay? And she return unto the Lord. There's the feeling right there. Israel shall return unto the Lord. Verse 2. Verse 3. The Lord will. Verse 3. The Lord will. Gather. Gather. Very good. The Lord will gather his people from all nations. Verse 5. Verse 5 says. The Lord will. Israel back into the and to the land. Very good. And then verse number six says the Lord will circumcise, which means change the what? Heart. The heart of his people that they will that they will love, love him. Lower circumcised, change the, the heart of the people that they will love him. Verse number nine. The Lord will make Israel plenteous, which means fruitful. fruitful. Very good. Fruitful. <clears throat> now, page 156, the permanency of the Palestinian covenant. The permanency. Although some of the provisions of this covenant have been fulfilled, for example, the Babylonian captivity in the present diaspora, the word diaspora means the scattering, it is still very much in force, okay? The covenant is still very much in force. What is it, What does the lesson say when it says it's still very much in force? It's still be and God's still doing it. Mm -hmm. Okay? So what's he doing? They disobey consequences. Mm -hmm. They obey the blessings. Okay? So that's still going on right now. Alright? Because have they all returned? Yeah. No, they're still returning. They're returning right now. Okay? So page 156, 3A, Ezekiel 16, 60. Ezekiel 16, 60. Ezekiel 16, verse 60. The Bible says in Ezekiel 16, 16. Nevertheless, I will remember my covenant with thee in the days of thy youth. And I will establish unto thee an everlasting covenant. 3a says, the covenant God made in the days of thy youth is called an everlasting covenant. Ezekiel 20, 34. Ezekiel 20, verse 34. The Bible says, And I will bring you out from the people, and will gather you out of the countries where ye are scattered with a mighty hand, and with a stretched out arm, and with fury poured out. The Old Testament prophets Still look for Israel's future regathering out of the what? 
The countries. The countries. Out of the countries where ye are scattered. scattered. Very good. Remember that Israel's disobedience to God <clears throat> did not forfeit the title to the land. It did not forfeit the title to the land, only the blessings of the land. He forfeited that. The Lord must allow for this because he's holy and his holiness cannot be set aside by any covenant, condition or unconditional. Okay? So that concludes the Palestinian covenant. And then we go right into the Davidic, Davidic covenants. 2 Samuel 7. 2 Samuel 7. 2 Samuel 7, verse 12 through 16. Second Samuel 7, 12 to 16. The Bible says, and when, they, and when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy mouths, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of the rod of man and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul whom I put away before thee. And, the, and thy house and thy kingdom shall be established forever. Excuse me. And thy house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. Forever. So the covenant enlarges upon the provisions of the Abraham covenant and concerning the throne. Concerning the throne. In verse number 16 specifically, it says, chapter 7, 16, the provisions of the, of the uh, Davidic covenant. In this verse, the Lord made three promises to King David. He said, thine, thine house should be established forever. Be thy what? Kingdom. Kingdom should be established forever. And lastly, thy throne should be established forever. So this this promise was to David. Okay? This is the promise to David. So basically, what was God saying to him with these three promises? That there will always be a king sitting on the throne that came from him. Okay? From him. Who was the first one? Solomon was the first one, okay? Solomon was the first one, and he's the one that built the house, right? Mm -hmm. right? So those were the provisions of the Divinity Covenant. And then number two, the permanency of the covenant. The permanency of the covenant, uh, 2 Samuel 7, 16 declares that the covenant is forever. 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 Psalm 89 Psalm 89. 3 and 4. Psalm 89, 3 and 4 says, I have made a covenant with my chosen. I sworn unto David my servant. Thy seed will I establish forever. And build up thy throne to all generations, Silah. And the heavens shall praise thy wonders, O Lord, thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. And then, uh, one, one extra. Look at 28. 28 through 37. 28 through 37 says, 
My mercy will I keep for him forevermore, and my covenant shall stand fast with him. His seed also will make to will I make to endure forever, and his throne as the days of heaven. If his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgments, if they break my statutes and keep not my commandments, then will I visit their transgression with a rod and their iniquity with stripes. Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. Once I have sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David's. His seed shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me. It shall be established forever as the moon, and as a faithful witness in heaven. See law. Okay? In verse number four, it says that the seed will be established forever. Okay, that seed will I establish forever. As you feel this right there. Uh, also from first, verse 4. And thy throne to all generations. And then from verse 33. Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take. My faithfulness will I not take. take. My covenant, in verse 34, will I not break, break nor alter. alter. Break nor alter. Verse 35, once have I sworn it by my holiness. holiness. According to this covenant, according to the psalm right here that we read, will Israel's disobedience annul the divinity covenant? Oh. So what kind of covenant is it? Unconditional. It's unconditional. Unconditional. It is based on God's holiness, not on man. Anything a man does. Isn't that the way we were saying? Mm -hmm. It wasn't based on anything that we did. Because when we came to Christ, what did we bring with us? Sin. Just sin. Nothing but sin. Okay, and it was His holiness, right? His holiness and His mercy that saved us. The Bible says it is by God's mercy that we are not consumed, right? It is by God's mercy that we're all breathing right now, right? You know, when I wake up in the morning, I, ask, I tell the Lord, thank you, Lord. I can breathe. I can move. I can walk and talk and work with my hands. I thank Him for all things because, you know, Everything that we have is a gift from God. Okay? Don't take it for granted. It is a gift from God. And then also the, the fact that that uh in verse 33, he said uh no uh yeah, verse 34. No. Yep. Oh, verse four, verse four. Thy seed will I establish forever and build up thy throne to all generations. Okay? All generations. Okay? So we know that after David, who was the next king? Solomon. Solomon, right? And then from there on, right? He said, God said, to all what? Generations. generations. Okay? So, when the rapture comes, Who's sitting on that throne? <clears throat> Jesus is. And what is his line? Where did he come from? David. Through David. Okay? So it's fulfilled. The scriptures fulfilled, right? And he will be the last one, <laughs> by the way. And who's going to be the king in the millennial kingdom? <clears throat> Jesus is going to be the king. Okay? There's no other king. He's, he's it. Okay? All power has been given unto him in heaven and in earth. And he's going to keep, uh, judge the, the living and the dead. Okay? He's, he's the king. Uh, the Bible says in the book of Revelation that he is the alpha, which means beginning. That's the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Alpha. Okay? Alpha and 
And that's the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So he's the all and all. He's also the beginning and the ending. Okay? He is he's God and he is the living God. So in the letter D, page 157 says Jeremiah 33. Jeremiah number 33. Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse number 19. 19 to, through 26. Jeremiah 33, 19 to 36. The Bible says, And the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, If ye can break my covenant on the day, and my covenant of the night, Thus saith the Lord, if ye can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, and that it should not be day and night in their season, then may also my covenant be broken with David, my servant. Okay? What did God just say right there? It can't be broken. Basically, it can't be broken, right? And, but how does he say it? What's he saying? If you go, keep your finger there. If you go to Genesis chapter 8. Okay? Genesis chapter number 8. Keeping your finger there, you're going to come back. If you don't have this verse marked, I encourage you to mark it. Put a star next to it, circle it, whatever you like. Okay? When I saw this verse right here, I said, Wow! This is God's promise, okay? Remember, he he, uh, he flooded the, the, the earth, right? Because the people were... Go to, go to chapter 6 first and look at verse number 5. This is why God flooded the land. Genesis 6, 5. <coughs> and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination and the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and they grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping things and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made man. Wow, when you read that, it's like, whoa. God repented that he created us. But, there's a but. Look at verse number 8. But. There was a man, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. There was one man in all that. Uh, we don't know how many people were there. Was, I don't know if it was millions or what, but there was a lot of people there at the Tower of Babel, okay? And they were all wicked. But in all those people, God found one man, okay, that was obedient to him. Think about your neighborhood. Think about your family. Think about uh, your where you work. Okay? You could be that one person that God loves. Okay? Among all, all those lost people, whether it's at work, in the hospital, whatever the case may be, you could be the only person in there. And when you look at all those lost people uh, and, their, and their fancy careers and high-paying jobs and everything, and... Have you ever thought, wow, man, they're all going to die no matter what they accomplish in this earth. It's going to be for nothing. They're going to spend all eternity in a lake of fire. And you are the one that has the lights. You are the one that has the treasure inside of you. Okay? Think about that next time you read this verse right here. Okay? And so that's why God destroyed the earth. You see that? But I, now go to chapter 8. I brought you there for a purpose. Look at verse 22. Look at God's promise. He says, While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and what? Cold. Did you know that back in the 70s? You know what the big thing was back in the 70s? 
There was a, 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 a uh, uh, it was like, it was the opposite of global warming. The earth was cooling and the, the ice from the north was gonna begin to cover the entire earth. And we only had so much time to live because the, the frozen tundra was coming and it was gonna cover everything with ice. <laughs> Look back at history, it's there, okay? And now it went to the opposite, right? Global warming. Did you know that the uh, uh, the big witch from global warming had a big meeting in Washington, D.C.? And they were going to uh, talk about what are we going to do with this global warming that's going to destroy the earth? And then while they were in that meeting, God sent a blizzard to Washington, D.C. Kaboosh! <laughs> and covered the entire city with, with snow up to the, almost up to the top of the cars. Okay, that was funny. God has a, a sense of humor. But look, look what it says right here. Cold and heat, summer and winter. Here's why I brought you there. Day and night shall not. That's the word of God. All these uh, scientists with their big uh, degrees and everything. Oh, we only have so much time. Global warming is going to take over the earth. And oh, we're all gonna, we're all going to die. Really? What does God say? So in this covenant right here, what God says in Jeremiah 33, he's saying, okay, if you can stop the day from happening, and if you can stop the night from happening, then I'll break the covenant with David. What's he saying? I'm not going to break the covenant with David. Okay? But if it was possible for you to stop the day and stop the night, then it would be possible for me to break the covenant with David. Okay, is it possible? Not possible, okay? If God should break his covenant with David, there would no longer be day and night, okay? Notice that when God gave similar covenant to Solomon in 1 Kings 9, 1 Kings 9, 1 Kings chapter 9, It's so easy for us to forget, okay, when uh, when you're out there in the world and you're dealing with people, whether it's your family, your extended family, uh, friends, co-workers, just the world in general, okay, you're going to hear a lot of stuff that the world's talking about in the news, right? Just remember, you have the Word of God, okay? Go to the Word of God because they're going to say this and they're going to say that, but what does God say? Okay? And it'll give you peace. Because the word of God is true. First Kings chapter 9. In verse 1. The Bible says in First Kings 9, 1. And it came to pass when Solomon had finished the building uh, of the house of the Lord. And the king's house. And all of Solomon's desire which he was pleased to do. That the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time. As he had appeared unto him at Gibeon. And the Lord said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou hast made before me. I have hallowed this house which thou hast built to put my name there forever. Mine eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. Now listen to that again. I have hallowed this house which thou hast built to put my name there forever and mine eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually <coughs> which perpet perpetually means what same as what forever perpetually is forever okay and where is that house what city is it in it's in jerusalem okay <coughs> and what city is everyone fighting about City of Jerusalem. Okay? The three main religions they claim the city of Jerusalem. Okay, you have the Muslims, the, the, the conquered it, and then you have the Jews who built the temple there. And what other religion? The Muslims, the Jews, and what other religion? What are you? Oh. <laughs> the Christians, okay? 
Of course, of course, you have to be careful, okay? When you read something on the internet, newspaper, or whatever, okay? What do they call it? Catholic Church. They call them Christians, okay? They are not Christians, okay? They're, they're a pagan religion. A pagan religion. When you, if you were to study the Catholic Church, you would be flabbergasted at, the, at, at how they worship, what they believe. You would not believe your eyes what they do, okay? But in the world, it's like they can't kill a fly, okay? But it is very, very wicked, okay? So when God gave this covenant to Solomon, verse, did I read the whole thing? No, I didn't do that. I gotta stop. Okay? So, um, okay, here we go. I have hallowed this house which thou hast built, verse 3, to put my name there forever, and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually forth. And if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walks, in integrity of heart and in uprightness, to do according to all that I have commanded thee, it will keep my statutes and my judgments. When you read that verse right there, mm -hmm. okay, put yourself in Solomon's place. Okay? This is what God wants you to do. If you will walk before me as David, in integrity of heart, in, in uprightness, to do according to all that I have commanded thee, the word of God, and will keep my statutes, the law, and my judgments, then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever. As I have promised to David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. But if ye shall let all turn from following me, then he turned. He turned. Ye or your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods. Did he do that? Yes, he did. And worship them. Then will I cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them, and this house which I have hallowed for my name will I cast out of my sight. And Israel shall be a proverb, a byword, among all people. Did that happen? Yes, that happened. The promise that he was going to scatter them, right? Eight. And at this house, which is high, everyone that passes by shall be astonished and shall hiss, and they shall say, Why hath the Lord done thus unto this land and to this house? Verse number eight. Use your imagination. In verse number eight, what are the people looking at? They are hissing. What, what do they see? What are they seeing? God. And they shall, uh, they shall say unto this, uh, why had the Lord done thus? What are they talking about? What are they seeing then? That they're hissing. They would look at what? What are they looking at? They're looking at the rubble of the temple. Completely destroyed. It was destroyed in 70 AD by the Romans. Okay? Where well, the Romans did the work of destruction. But who was it really doing it? Lord. It was the Lord doing it. Why? Why did he do it? And people are asking, why did God do this? It was because they were what? Disobedient and follow other small g gods. Okay? God will not share his, his glory with anyone. With no one. Okay? He's a very jealous God. Verse number nine, and they shall answer because they forsook the Lord their God, who brought forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt, 
and have taken hold upon other gods and have worshipped them and served them. Therefore had the Lord brought upon them all this evil. Okay? By the way, does God only do that to Jews? No, he doesn't. What do we call it in the New Testament when God does to does that to Christians? Chastening. And what shape does that chastening come in? All kinds. God has many options to use, okay? He has many options. So when God gave the similar covenant to Solomon, it was conditional. Okay? It was conditional. The Lord did not promise that Solomon's seed would sit upon David's throne forever. Did you notice that? This is because his lineage would be eventually cut off. Okay? Jeremiah 22. Jeremiah chapter 22. Jeremiah chapter 22 and verse number 30. Jeremiah 22 verse 30. The Bible says, Thus saith the Lord, Write ye this man childless. A man that shall not prosper in his days. For no man of his seed shall prosper sitting upon the throne of David and ruling any more in Judah. Wait a minute. God promised who? David. David. There will always be a upon the throne. But what happened here? What happened here? Oh, earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. Thou saith the Lord, write ye this man childless. A man that shall not prosper in his days, for no man of his seed shall prosper sitting on the throne of David and ruling any more in Judah. Why did, why did God do that? Were they obedient? No. They were disobedient. Okay, now David was obedient, right? Mm -hmm. But when it went to Solomon, the covenant... And David, David, the covenant to David was what kind? Unconditional. Unconditional. No matter what David did, God was going to do it, right? Mm -hmm. But when it came to his son Solomon, the Lord did not promise that his seed would sit upon David's throne forever. Mm -hmm. This is because his line would eventually be cut like it is right here. Look at Jeremiah 36. Jeremiah 36. Jeremiah 36, so look at verse 30. 36 verse 30 says, Therefore thus saith the Lord of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, he shall have none to sit upon the throne of David. He's been what? Cut off, isn't he? Mm -hmm. And his dead body shall be cast out in the day to the heat and in the night to the frost. So David was obedient, right? As a matter of fact, God made a verse that is worldwide known about David. He said, this man has my heart. Okay? So the relationship between him and David was solid, right? But when it came to his son, Solomon, he started falling. Okay? And after that, after Solomon, every king, <laughs> they were compared, guess who they were compared to after Solomon? They were compared to David. He did not like his father David. He did not like his father David. He did evil. He did not follow God like his father David. Okay? So after that, they were compared to David. And uh, there were some, there were some kings who were who were good, but but some that were really really bad. And Jehoiakim was a bad one. 
Okay, after Jehoiakim was Jehoiachin, his brother. And then after that, it was so bad that God sent the Babylonians and just took everybody. You're all gone. Because they disobeyed the word of the Lord. Okay, so in studying the lineage of Christ, we see that Joseph's line comes through Solomon and the kings of Judah. And you find that in Matthew 1. But Mary's line comes from David's in Luke chapter 3. Okay, so we'll stop right there for right now because we are out of time. So what do we learn from this lesson? Give me some things that we learned from this lesson about, about God. What did we learn about God from this lesson? Um, his, his unconditional um, covenant with David would he compared it essentially to, to no being, nobody being able to destroy the sun or the moon and its, and its everlasting existence. Mm -hmm. Very good. And that's exactly how his covenant to David would be even to our generation. Yep. It is an everlasting covenant. That's right. Very good. Well, what else did we learn about God? Rebecca? One thing we learned about God in this study. We learned that God blank Blank. Blank. We learned that God keeps His covenants, promises. promises. Oh, covenants! Yeah, He keeps He keeps his covenants. Okay, mm -hmm. and they are still in effect. Okay, they are still in effect. Okay. Remember that when we talk about Israel, we're talking with the whole nation, okay? But when we talk about Christianity in the church, which is different from Israel, okay? There's a, there's a, a wrong teaching out there, which is called replacement theology, okay? Where they replace uh, Israel with the church, and they make Israel in the Old Testament to be the church. Okay, that's not right. Okay? It's two separate testaments. The Old Testament, New Testament. Remember the Old Testament? Um, who is married to God? The Jews. The Jews are married to God. That's his wife. Okay? They're still married. Okay? But God had to do to them what? God had to give them a what? A bill of what? A divorce. Okay? There was no divorce before. Okay? So God gave them a bill, a bill of divorce because they were unfaithful to him. Okay? And in the New Testament, we are not married to, to God. Okay? The church is not married to God. The church is the bride of, of Jesus, right? And but, but we're not married yet. We are what? We're engaged. We're engaged. Okay, so when is the the big wedding going to take place? After the rapture. When we're in heaven, then we'll have the, the Lord's Supper, the big dinner, okay, the big party, and uh, then we're with the bride of Christ. Okay, then after the rapture, the seven years down here, tribulation, all the th things going to happen, and then and after the seven years of that, then we come back with Jesus. All dressed then, white, okay? And then he's going to set up his millennial kingdom. And then in his millennial kingdom, he's going to reign over the entire earth in Jerusalem. And all the, all the nations are gonna go and worship him there, okay? And we are gonna to get to do what with him? Reign. Rule, reign. We're going to reign. Okay? So we are kings. <laughs> okay? We're kings and waiting and priests. That's what we are. Amazing, isn't it? Father, thank you, Lord God, for this lesson. I pray, Father God, that we'll remember it. It's exciting, Lord God, to see not only the past and how you uh, point to the future, uh, the coming of the Lord Jesus, 
Thank you, Lord God, for loving us and for receiving us, Lord God, who were uh, one time unlovable. You love us, Lord, and we love you. Bless the morning service to follow, Father, in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. 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 Amen.